a lot of things are happening in the zoo that I don't even know where to start from or where to end, but I will attempt to bring a semblance of reason and understanding to the discourse bedeviling the zoo today. And what do I mean by that? It's because we don't learn. As I have lamented, it's a good thing to see that most writers these days in the zoo, they go back, they listen to our broadcast, and they come back, and they begin to write very glowingly about, should I say, what they are passing through at the hands of the gingerweed. But one thing struck me as I was reading, as I always do, I'm an avid reader of what is happening in the zoo. Something struck me that it is only the Fulani people who don't actually own any land at all in the zoo because they're not indigenous to the country. And another thing that actually struck me is that two sets of people have actually conquered indigenous people in Nigeria, one from the north and one from the south, from the sea. They all came with their own religion. Very, very interesting. You know, I was, I was, as I was, I was, I was reading, it struck me that the first people to actually lift arms to conquer people in Nigeria were the Moors, which is, is a mongrel race, a mixture of um, black people of, um, of northern West Africa, the northern parts of West Africa, and the slave Arab slave raiders in those days that gave birth to races like the, like the, um, um, the Moors, not the Tuaregs, the Moors, and now you have um, the Fulani. As, as part of them, they came to conquer. They conquered the Hausa people. I'm sure you've heard this many times, but I have to say it again. So you have to track, so you can, you can actually absorb the essence of what I'm trying to, this very knowledge that we are trying to, to, to impart into some of you this evening, morning, afternoon, depending on where you are. And from the South came um, um, Britain with their Bible. <laughs> from the North, they came with the Quran. From the south, they came with their Bible, Britain. These are two foreign aliens. And the most important thing that people must realize is that these are the two, the two people conniving today to hold us down in perpetual bondage. I want every indigenous Nigerian, so to speak, to listen to me very carefully. Two people came to conquer you. Only two of them. Houses never moved until the Fulanis came. The very proud Habe monarchies of the Hausa kingdoms of the north. I don't think that Karen Bono tried to expand more than it is it is today, the Karen Bono Empire. And one thing, one of the reasons why I like Kanuri people, not Abakiari, because Abakiari was a Shua Arab, not Kanuri. A proud Kanuri man can never support evil. These are the history, these are the, this, this is the history that some of you don't know about, that I'm telling you this evening. An average Kanuri man doesn't support oppression, does not support evil. So we should stop tagging everybody from even the Janja would call North as Fulani because they're not. And I'm not saying that the whole of Fulani people are bad, of course, far from it. There are sensible ones amongst them. Nobody's saying that all Fulani people are bad, such uh, you know, um, 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 sweeping generalization is not very good in any intellectual um, um, discussion or, or debate. No, not at all. So there are bound to be one or two good people amongst them. But what we're saying is that the majority are simply awful. Awful in the sense that they came into our land from the foothills of the Futajalon. They conquered the Hausa people. They imposed their brand of, should I say, we strain of Wahhabi in their Islam, all this whole Sharia nonsense and all the rest of it. They took over the corner, they took over the Hausa lands and from there they came into the Wagi people, the Afemai, all the rest of them in the north, they took over. No problem. Somebody came from the south as well. They are called the British. A land of very immensely intelligent and conscientious people. As I keep saying all the time, English man in the main is a nice human being conscientious. They were the ones who stopped slavery. They actually had to come to Africa to stop us from selling ourselves. English people, this coast of America, that said no to slavery. Slaves were running away from the south and coming to the north. Where, of course, English value system predominated. They believed in freedom. But there were some pirates, so to speak, that came from England. 
they came from the south. The only thing is that they came with their guns and their sword. They also had the Bible with them. I wouldn't call it the Bible, but I'll call it the, the New Testament. They brought it with them as they were coming. The same people that said to us, thou shalt not kill, we are the ones killing us to force us to become the way they want us to become after cutting us away as slaves for over 200 years. I want people to pay attention to this lecture this evening. Very, very critical, very, very crucial. There are two people, or there were two people that came into Nigeria. Before they came, every indigenous community were living peacefully. Nobody knew who was a minority or who was a majority, especially in the East, in Biafra land where we come from. The Igbo people never attempted to conquer the Ibibio people because they recognized that they are one, the same blood, the same family. Instead, in Bende, where I come from, we had to go and borrow, and no, I wouldn't say borrow, we brought in Anan culture, which is a conquer and the and um, and I think in Ayana we even have Ekan, Ekan in Arochipu as well. These are the things that I want people to pay very close attention to, to appreciate the enormity of the disaster confronting each and every one of us. The enormity of the disaster confronting each and every one of us. Because we are live and direct and the whole world is listening. The world is listening we are live and we are direct. Do you know that these people came? Fulanese took over the north. Britain took over the south. Lugard continued to march to the north. When Lugard met them in the north, this is something that people do not know. Lugard decided to introduce indirect rule. Do you know how and why Lugard introduced indirect rule? Because the reason why some of you, uh, you know, I was fascinated. I've been doing this research for years. I finished it today. I kept asking myself, why was it possible that Britain came with the Bible, told us about the love of Jesus Christ, but preferred to work with Muslims, killing Christians? I never understood it until it struck me. The, the, it was Lugard, it, the people that taught Lugard how to, should I say, conduct indirect rule are the Fulani people. Because the reason why Britain respects Fulani people, I wouldn't say respect, I would say admire them, is this. The Fulani people, we are fewer in number, but they were controlling the whole of the North that included the Hausa people, the Gwari people, the Bachama people, the Bijon people, the TV, everybody's there. So Lugard kept wondering, how is it possible that a few men, a handful of people with cattle, not that they were educated, no, a handful of people with cattle, how was it possible that these people could dominate and subjugate all these large swathes of land? Then the answer came in the form of indirect rule. It was foreign people that said indirect rule. When the foreigners come, all they need to do is to install their Eme or their, uh, basically their Eme or Sariki. No, Sariki, I think is Hausa. Install their Eme. Despite the fact that in a village or in a city in the north, in Hausa lands in those days, you would only find one Fulani Eme and his council of about maybe 10 or a dozen Fulani people with their wives and their children, you will see them controlling millions of Hausa people. And there was no problem. Britain now said, okay, it is now possible for us, for me to be as what DC, the district commissioner at the top, I now go and appoint warrant chiefs to be reporting to me. That was why it became possible to rule black Africa, especially West Africa, with very few white men. Indirect rule, they called it. The first people to bring in indirect rule was Fulani Janjaweed. Because you have one Fulani man as the emir controlling millions of Hausa people, and they're all loyal to him. That was how indirect rule came in. So Britain now found a natural ally in Fulani people, a natural ally. I said, okay, if they, despite the fact that they're moving cattle from place to place, you know, these people who are fewer in number but can control all this amount of people, they must be very clever. 
and I don't blame them. That was how British and the Fulani and Fini, uh, uh, affinity, so to speak, metamorphosed into the total conquest you're witnessing today. Now, ask yourself this question. Is there any other country in the world where what is happening today in Nigeria could be happening and that nobody's saying anything about it? Remember, I told you many years ago, and I, I, as, as I'm always very fond of repeating, I said to you that the Fulani, the Fulani Janjaweed, they have over thirty billion dollars in their war chest to keep Nigeria warm for their total domination. Some of you thought I was joking. Now, ask yourself this question: How come Bloomberg hasn't covered what is going on? How come CNN doesn't report the, day, the, the daily killings? One once in a while, they say, "Oh, school children, school children, we abducted." After four or five hours, that news completely disappears. Have you asked yourself why Al Jazeera hasn't come to do an in-depth analysis or, or to investigate what is going on? Have you asked yourself why ABC, all these major global players in, term, in terms of media might and strength, why they have shunned Nigeria? Because they have been bought over. They even bought people, they, they, they not only bought over Facebook, they bought over the encryption of WhatsApp so that they can now listen to your messages when you are on WhatsApp or making a call with WhatsApp um, application on your smartphone. They sold it to the zoo because they have the money. 30 billion US dollars. That is what they're using. I told you that that's what they have. Collectively, all the governors, all the ministers, they have been looting the uh, central bank for years. Looting it for years. The money they were keeping it, they, of course they can buy houses in, in Dubai and all the rest of it. Yes. But they contribute to a fund. They contribute to a fund, what I call the, the fund of conquest. Because they understand one simple thing. As Britain advised them, once you shot the ears of the world, once you suppress this news coming out of Nigeria, the world cannot do anything. Because for you to arouse the moral, the conscience of the world, they need to feed on information. Remember the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar, if I'm not mistaken. Why was it that the whole world, including the UN, was screaming, Rohingya, Rohingya, give them freedom? Because there was a conscious decision by all the media, major media groups in the world. Mind you that CNN is owned by an, an Arab. Are you aware of that? Al Jazeera is owned by an Arab. The biggest investor into Rupert Murdoch's media empire is from Qatar, is the Qatari royal family. In other words, Fox, Sky News, um, 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 ABC in Australia, um, 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 Sun newspaper in England, and all the newspapers in Rupert Murdoch's stable, Arab. The Qatari royal family are the biggest investors. These are the things that people don't actually understand. And I'm even sure, even in Facebook, I'm sure one of the biggest contributors to, to the fund, the, the hedge fund they are using to run Facebook is from the Arab world. In other words, a Muslim. They play a long-term game. They, will, they said they would take over the world. And they used to say it when we were in, in, in university, our undergraduates in England. I never believed them. They said they would take it over. I said, I said, it's impossible. And now it is happening before our eyes. We are in one almighty mess. All of us, one big mess. Ask yourself this question. The Nigerian army, we are raping women. Biafran women, airlifted illegally from Uguacha. Took them to the north. We are raping them. They brought them to court today in chains, in chains. After raping them, Britain is saying that very thing. Germany can see it. EU can see it, UN can see it, everybody can see it, but nobody can say anything. Have you ever wondered or asked yourself why? Now, are you telling me that you can go and take Muslim women, bring them to a way, put chains on them, and be getting Igbo police or military officers to be raping them every night? Believe you me, Britain will sink the entire, they will sink it. They will send their warships to sink us into oblivion. Why are these things happening to you and nobody's talking? Do you see how they cleverly managed all the years of the massacre in the Middle Belt? In Plateau states to be precise. And now they have moved on to Benue. Do you know what, what emboldened them? 
because of what I call media silence. This media silence is not, um, um, I wouldn't say it is conscious. What they have done is to pour in money, after money, pour in money, pour in money, to suppress any news that will cast Fulani in a bad light. That is why anything you write castigating the zoo in Nigeria, under this Fulani regime, believe you me, Facebook will shut you down. But go back and ask yourself, did Facebook do the same thing under Jonathan? It was social media that killed Jonathan. It was social media that killed Jonathan. Now you must understand this very, very carefully. The people ruling you today are those that conquered you. One came from the Sahel, from the north. They're not Nigerians. Flani are not Nigerians. No, they're not. That is why you cannot find any place. I can say I am an evil man. I come from a place called Bende. I come from a place called Ibeko. Forget about that. Don't want my hair. Show my hair. Doesn't exist. It's nobody's name. I come from Isama Faruk. I want you to tell me which land in the present day Nigeria can you say belongs to Fulani people originally? There is none. You know why? Because they are nomads. They are wandering people. Anywhere their car wants to rest, they rest there. But when Britain came in and found out that Fulani can control millions of Hausa people, only one Fulani man, one MA with 10 people controlling millions of people, uh -huh, they said, okay, what you're doing is very good. These people are very foolish. We are also going to do the same. Now Britain introduced indirect rule. That was how they managed to, with very few officers, they managed to rule black people in Africa. I'm not blaming them. I blame our stupidity for it. Now, these are the things that you need to bear in mind. That now, this conqueror from the north, the Fulani with their cattle from the north, and this conqueror from the sea, the, the British, they have now combined, joined together to ensure that we are held down in perpetual bondage. That is why Britain is killed. Remember during uh, Bacha's regime, everybody was shouting and screaming, shouting and screaming, shouting and screaming. All of a sudden, evil is happening before our eyes. Evil that is worse than under Abacha. All of them that formed Nadeko running around under Abacha, you can see that a worse evil is happening now. It was never this bad under Abacha. Never this bad under Jonathan. All of you can see the two eyes open, yet you do nothing about it. Unbelievable. There is no place that you can say that the Fulani people come from. They've been very clever over the years. Babangida, all the rest of them uh, who have all the military rulers, you know, they will give Fulani 80%, they will give you 20%. Fulani 80. But now, since 2050, it's 100% Fulani. You can do nothing about it. And on top of because they know they're running out of time. They only have two years to complete their game plan. Their master plan, only two more years. You know all these Fulanis, these Janjaweed, these terrorists and rapists, bandits you're seeing in the forest, their plan was to unleash mayhem in 2022. That was their plan, to take over our land in 2022. It was the coming of IPOB that stopped them. What we now did was to make them hurry up and do that thing that they wanted to do in 2022, to hurry up and do it now. That's what they're doing. That is why they said wherever they are is their land, because they have no land. Sokoto is not theirs. Sokoto is Gobe. It's a house land, not their own. Ask Fulani, where do you come from? If he says I'm from Sokoto, ask him, where does your grandfather come from? Where does your great grandfather come from? Where does your great, great, great grandfather come from? They will disappear. They're from Senegal or from Gambia. They are not the children of the soil. That is what Facebook doesn't want to hear. That is what our enemies do not want to hear. But that is the truth. That is, it does, uh, we are not preaching ethnic hatred for anybody, no, but that is a fact. That is a fact. And here we must preach it and preach it uncompromisingly.